pH scale. It does kind of raise the question, what the heck do we mean by pH? We'll find out in a moment. You know it refers to how acidic or alkaline a solution is. So let's begin with the question, what is pH? Question number one, what is pH? Well, if we know what the H stands for, we're halfway there, aren't we? The H stands for hydrogen ions. You see, in water, in water you have equal quantities of hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. Water is neutral. You have to realise that if you have an acid, things are different. In an acid, you have huge numbers of hydrogen ions and correspondingly few hydroxides, but they're still there. An acid still has hydroxide ions, but far fewer than in water. And what about an alkali? An alkali is the other way around. In an alkali, you've got very few hydrogen ions, but of course, many numbers, great numbers of hydroxide ions. You'll notice that what's happening here is the hydrogen ions that's changing. And the pH keeps track of the hydrogens. When there's lots of hydrogen ions, we have got what we have is a low pH and very acidic. When we have very few hydrogen ions, we have a very high pH and it's alkaline. So the H in pH is to do with hydrogen ions. If you know the hydrogen ion concentration, you can work out the pH. Here's another question that you could do with asking yourselves. Let's look at acid pH. Suppose we had some hydrochloric acid. And let's say the concentration of the acid was, let's say, 0.1 moles per litre. What would be its pH of one? Well, it turns out the pH of this acid is 1. If we watered it down by a factor of 10, we made it 10 times less concentrated till it was 0.01 moles per litre, 10 times less concentrated, its pH would be 2. And as we continue to water it down by a factor of 10, the pH goes up by 1. What's the connection? You might say, well, it's the number of zeros, and you'd be pretty close to the mark. If you take these concentrations, if you take the concentration and you express it in a more scientific way, in other words, in this case, let's simplify it, call it 10 to the negative 3, we're practically looking at the pH. If I have a concentration of 0.01, that's 10 to negative 2, and that little power, the clue there, is the pH. So on it goes. So it's quite easy to work out the pH of an acid. If you have an acid with a concentration of 0.0001, with a concentration of 10 to negative 4, same number, we can see the pH will be 4. So working out the pH of an acid is easy. Look at its concentration, express it as a power, you've got the pH. So you can see that the P effectively stands for power. So we're getting something. What about water? Why does water have a pH of 7? Water, pH 7. Well, what does pH 7 mean? If the pH is 7, that 7 is 10 to negative 7, which is 0.0000001 moles per litre hydrogen ion concentration. It's telling us what we know, that water has hydrogen ions, but very, very few, 10 to negative 7. So if I write down an equation for water, here it is, you'll recognise this, here's the dissociation of water into ions, we can say that the concentration of hydrogen ions is 10 to negative 7 moles per litre. That's giving it a pH of 7. But we know that water is neutral. And water is neutral because it has an equal number of hydroxide ions. They must also be 10 to negative 7. Now, if this was to become acidic, if the hydrogen ions were to increase, we find that this was to correspondingly decrease, we find there's a sort of theme to this, a constant, and that is that when you multiply these together, it always comes to 10 to the negative 14. It's called the ionic product of water. So no matter how big this is or how small this is, it will always come to 10 to the negative 14. Let's say, instead of being this small, 
let's say this has gone up to 10 to negative 2. Then if this is as high as that, this will have to be much, much smaller, 10 to negative 12. Look at this. With a hydrogen ion, don't lose sight of it now, with a hydrogen ion concentration of 10 to negative 2, this would have a pH of 2. What about alkalis? Can we work out the pH of an alkali? pH of alkali. Let's take an example. Suppose we have 0 0.01 moles per litre sodium hydroxide. And the question is, what is its pH? Where do we begin? Well, we can see that the concentration of the alkali is 10 to the negative 2, 0 0.01. That's the value for hydroxide. And we just said a moment ago that when you multiply that by the H+, plus, it always comes to 10 to negative 14. Always. So if that's negative 2, and we're told it's negative 2, the H will have to be 10 to negative 12. But of course it's pH that we're interested in. The pH is focusing on the hydrogens. So if the hydrogen ions have a concentration of 10 to negative 12, the pH will be 12. Finally, suppose you were asked to estimate a pH. Estimate a pH. Let's suppose we had an acid with a a concentration of 0 0.0005. No, let's make that 3 moles per litre. Okay? This is an acid. And that's its concentration. What's its pH? Every previous example has been a less straightforward number, but this is an awkward number. What's its pH? You have to say, well, whereabouts in the pH scale would that be? That is, that is bigger, bigger than 0 0.0001, that's a bigger number than that, but it's smaller than 0 0.001. Right? Okay? So, if it was this concentration, it would, with, with four zeros, it would be 10 to negative 4, pH of 4. If it was this concentration, it would be 10 to negative 3, pH of 3. What's the concentration of, what's the pH of this acid? Somewhere between 3 and 4. We can't be any more accurate than that. Okay, you might think you know, but you don't. All you can say is somewhere between these two pH values. So there we have it. pH is the power of the hydrogen ions. The hydrogen and hydroxide are always present. As one gets bigger, the other one gets smaller. Express the acid as a power, and you look at the pH. Water is a pH of 7 because it has that concentration of hydrogen ions. Remember this magic number, 10 to negative 14. When you multiply these concentrations, you always get this value. And if you're given a rather awkward number to handle, the best you can do is to say roughly whereabouts in the pH scale it would fall.